It goes one, two, three, four, five. Kira can count, so maybe can simplify? Not as far as I can tell. We're here to look at Kira 5.0. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Kira 5.0 just dropped last week on the 21st, and uh, I am uh, uh, a little bit incredibly excited about this. This kind of changes the game for Kira, and there are some pretty major things that happened here. But if you want to hear the story regarding Kira 5.0 and hear me accidentally call it Arcane for a fair bit of time and then realize it's Arachne and then find that 46% of people are on my side, go take a look at our podcast that we recently did with James Von Kessel, the senior software architect for Ultimaker Cura. He, along with the rest of the team over at Ultimaker that do the development for Cura, are responsible for Cura 5.0. Yes, one, two, three, four, five time, five time, Cura. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous that... Cura has had, I believe it was 21 updates since the last time Simplify 3D got an update. And we've been waiting for 5.0 about as long as I've been waiting for Half-Life 3. Let's give the valve a spin. Anyways, let's jump right into what's new about Ultimaker Cura 5. Now with Arachne. So we can see that it is a brand new slicing engine. It says that the following special beta releases are to test this Arachne engine, and they are pleased to announce the new slicing engine, and it allows variable line widths. That's kind of the big deal here. These variable line widths will either collapse lines into one single perimeter, one thick perimeter, where it feels are necessary, or it will make certain that infill is not randomly, arbitrarily placed for no good reason. And if you've used Cura 4.13, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where it can just randomly place infill, especially along corners, it, it, because it can. Now with variable line width in the middle of the print, you're not setting any of this, right? The engine is dealing with it for you all of these problems go away. We can see that because of this line width change, they are able to speed up printing considerably. And that's a big deal. Now, the one thing I do want to point out, because a lot of times they're taking what was a two perimeter system and cutting it down to a single perimeter. If you don't have your settings correct, you will end up with holes in your part similar to this. This was a clock spring vase that we were printing for a time lapse. And no matter what I would do, we were dealing with the fact that silk filament tends to shrink when you leave it inside of a hot end. Well, when you would go to detract after the picture was taken for the time lapse, there wouldn't be any material there creating a gap all along the Z seam. I don't know how Cura 5.0 is going to deal with stuff like this, but we'll see. I'm sure you could force it to do two perimeters instead of one, but I like this idea of utilizing it so you're getting more accurate prints along the entire perimeter of your part. I love how they've streamlined the marketplace integration as well. We're going to show that here in just a second because ultimately it was kind of a pain in the ass to find before and it really wasn't something that people utilized a ton. Now, the fact that it is way easier to find makes it a benefit especially for those out there that are barbarians and prefer the barbarian measurement system. Thanks, Shane. And we will link to the entire release notes along with the GitHub page, the announcement video, and so much more in that description. If you guys are looking to get more information, start down there as well. Right after you start by liking and subscribing and listening to this word from our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. If you want to do 3D printing and you just don't want to bother with all the effort that it could sometimes take, those of you out there that started with something that might have been a little cheap and struggled and struggled and struggled know exactly what I'm talking about. 3D printing is not for the faint of heart. It requires time. Well, the experts at 3D Musketeers have had over 40 years of combined experience worth of time to help you get your ideas and make them a reality. The team here at 3D Musketeers not only produces parts with 3D printing, but we also make these videos uh, on better part of five days a week now. We do this to help educate the general public, but this stuff isn't cheap. 
right? Producing videos, professional editing, and all of that comes at a pretty significant cost here to myself and the team at 3D Musketeers. We sponsor our own videos because, well, we don't have sponsors at this time, so if you know people, let me know. You can email us to YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. But we're always willing to get some help from you, the community. It is the beginning of the month, and that means it is the perfect time to support your favorite creators over on Patreon. Ours happens to be patreon.com slash 3dmusketeers, with tiers starting as low as $1. And that money goes to helping us make better videos faster, more efficiently, and most recently kept me from sweating my ass off when my air conditioning in my house broke for three and a half weeks. We would absolutely appreciate anything that you guys can give. It is, of course, beginning of the month and the right time to work with your favorite creators, not just us, anyone that you would like to support. Anyways, I appreciate you guys listening through this call to action. Hopefully, you'll be able to help us out. If not, I totally understand. We would appreciate a like and a subscribe if you think we deserve it. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, we can see instantly that a lot of my plugins that I have in Cura don't work. This is mainly because we are in Ultimaker Cura 5.0 beta, and a lot of them haven't been updated to deal with the new Arachne engine. So, we're just gonna just remove them all. And you're going to deal with a problem similar to that as well, unless you haven't done anything with the plugins. And if you haven't, go check out our video on the marketplace and plugin rundown for Ultimaker Cura. It's a good one that I think makes a lot of sense, especially right now. We can see that when you load it in, it looks pretty much the same, same, but different. We can see that going to the marketplace means there's not as many tools as there used to be. But don't worry, that all will come in due time. But one of the most amazing things to come out is the lightning infill. Some Cura users have enjoyed it for a couple of betas, but the lightning infill to me is similar to support cubic inside of Prusa Slicer, where it just builds it where it needs it. But I like the way that lightning infill works. Let's take a look at it. We got some pieces in here. We got this one that needs to be placed on a face here. All right, we got some parts loaded. We got them placed where we want them. We're gonna take a look at the settings. So I'm using the generic Prusa MK3S just because this is what I'm used to, right? This is what loads for me with Kira. This is what we're going to do. We can take a look that we want a wall thickness of 0.8 with a line count of 2. I'm going to change the pattern to lightning and we're going to change the density to 25 because I want 25% at the top, but at the bottom, the density of support is not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and slice it and take a look. We got some models loaded in here and we got them sliced up in Arachne, Cura 5.0. I've got an old instance of Cura 4.10 here. Same settings, everything is the same. Let's hit slice. We can see in just the estimation of time, we go from 14 hours and 21 minutes down to 13 hours and 49 minutes. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, but Grant, that's not a ton of time. I know, it's not. Let's play with some settings and see what we can get out of it, though. So we can see that we go from 13 hours and 37 minutes. Nice. All the way up to 14 hours and 18 minutes. And a lot of this happens in the Raspberry Pi case that we have here. Take a look. We've got random bits of crap infill here, as well as here, that could easily be cut down into nothing but fast perimeters. Arachne knows this and did that immediately for us. This results in not only a model that's more solid, but it's a faster print by almost an entire hour. It's fairly significant in terms of its percentage, and it results in a better outcome of a part, right? This is going to be ugly. Really, really, really ugly. And we can see sometimes Kira figures it out, but on Arachne, on the new Arachne, we go down through the layers. It just gets it the entire freaking way. Let's compare layer to layer here real quick. Look right here. Look at all the lack of infill, right? All those yellow lines are bits of superfluous infill that does not belong there, does not need to be there. And Arachne knows this. This is the big deal, okay? You will get better, more consistent quality prints out of Cura 5.0. And if you ask me, 
we know it's only going to get better. These people at Ultimaker Kira have dedicated their lives to putting all of this stuff together to the point of apparently they've got even a maker night at work where they all work after hours utilize 3d printers just like this and they themselves have noticed a massive change in the quality of their prints and in the reduction of print time all of these things matter a lot especially when you're running a business ultimately for us if we can get parts done faster we will great example this was the time lapse you guys saw yesterday this is a building for a usf architectural design student who well needed it real fast this is 19 and a half hours with my speed profile inside of prusa slicer right this is just me basically turning up the stock settings to as close to the limit as i can with bare bone stock settings we were looking at 27 28 hours a massive difference and that time well that's money there's also a ton of support on this you'll see in the time lapse video but yeah it's good filming this is the uh design white from printed solid versus a brilliant white you guys can see the difference there as well but that's not what we're here to talk about not you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about no no we're looking at the spider that nobody saw coming arachne and there is more to this right we also have lightning infill and lightning infill is incredibly similar to the support cubic that we see inside of prusa slicer let's take a look at it and see if we can just find a model that we can test it with all right we got a new part loaded it is a rear main seal adapter for a harley and a buell motorcycle and we are going to adjust the infill pattern to lightning over on Cura 4.10, I don't believe we had that option. We definitely did not. So we're going to go to one that I think will be the fastest, which should be crisscross. Now let's get these things sliced. Remember, everything else is the same here. An hour and 21 minutes versus an hour and 57 minutes. Take a look at the lightning infill. This stuff is... Well, it's pretty darn cool. We can see it basically builds it up from the outer walls to create infill only where you need it. Now, for this particular part, it needs to be pretty darn solid because it, you know, it, it's a force application. But it was the easiest part that we had laying around. And we can mess around with this by upping its percentage from 10 to, let's say... 45 at 45% we can see really what lightning does similar to tree support where it builds off of itself to create that layer that you need to build over so if you're making a project that really doesn't need a ton of support and look at this even at 45% for the top layer right like seriously take a look at this that is what your top layer before your solid infill looks like versus this now I don't know about you guys I'm taking this over this any day of the week, and we are still less time. 16 grams of material versus 20 grams of material. So we're also lighter, and it's happening about a half hour, a little over half an hour less time. And I would think that your top layer of surface is going to look better here because you have more material ready to build on top of. But be careful with this setting. You must make sure that your cooling is set well. If you don't have enough cooling, your ends of your lightning infill might have a tendency to curl up where your hot end can knock right into it as it's moving across your print. I highly recommend adding a little bit of Z-hop to make sure things like that don't occur but this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of material especially if you're printing materials like basf ultra fuse or materials from the virtual foundry who we also interviewed in a previous podcast we'll card to it if you want to learn all about printing with metal filament on enders yeah it's kind of ridiculous and ultimaker does now support directly printing with materials like basf ultra fuse part of cure 5.0 is also supporting metal based filament inside of ultimakers now i would guess that you will be able to do pull requests if you want to basically provide profiles that will work with other printers as well but this is pretty awesome and yes for those of you out there that don't really like cura all that much 
I am told that Lightning Infill is coming to Prusa Slicer. It's just a matter of time. They actually talked about it on the most recent Prusa Live. We'll card to that as well so you guys can take a look. I think there is a lot going on here, and the beta is just scratching the surface, and I've had a very small amount of time to play with it. But I think what we should do, since we have a few printers that are identical behind us, is set up a big time lapse, something where we're using a time lapse camera, so it won't be a pretty octo lapse or anything like that. But test lightning infill versus support cubic versus old cura and new cura i think that's going to be a really cool set of videos if you guys want to see that let me know maybe we can put that together for next week i like this brand new cura and i'm going to definitely be utilizing it more than i objectively use the previous curas as you all might be able to tell it's been a minute since i've used cura because well I've been a Precisor fanboy for a while, but the Arachne engine, as well as the Lightning infill, and yes, I've heard you, tree supports, we're gonna take a look at it. All of these things are pushing me to give Cura an honest chance. Let me know down in those comments, do you guys like Cura? Do you like the idea of the new Arachne engine? And are you going to download the beta and take a look at it? Let me know if there's anything that you guys think that I missed or that you want to see covered with more detail in a future video. But that's all I have for you today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. May the fourth be with you. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Also, Mother's Day is coming up. Don't forget. Remove in the plugins. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all so much for what you do in making these videos possible. If you want to help us out here on the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers and join for as low as $1 per month right below me is going to be our first look at cura so you can see how things have changed between then and now and right next to that will be the entire slicer series so you guys can see what else is out there but definitely be giving cura 5.0 a chance i will see you all down in those comments and in the next one don't forget to leave a like if you think we earned it and have a good one take care